Chapter 8 I squinted across the parking lot at Rodeo, sitting innocent and unawares on Jaeger's steps. I chewed my lip to the point of hurting. This was going to be tough. Come on, Coyote. This was going to be darn near impossible. For Rodeo, going home was a set in stone, hard as dried concrete, no go. We hadn't been back since we'd left five years before. We hadn't talked about it or even mentioned it in all that time. We weren't allowed to, just like we weren't allowed to talk about my mom or my sisters. Couldn't say their names, not ever. They were ghosts, and they were ghosts we weren't allowed to look at. So if I waltzed up to Rodeo and told him I wanted to go back home to dig up a memory box of my mom and sisters, we'd get to know so fast I'd get a sore neck. I was going to have to play this one just right. Now, I was pretty good at playing Rodeo. I'd been doing it for years, but he was a tricky bird to play. You could say that learning to play rodeo was like learning to play a guitar. If the guitar had 13 strings instead of six, and three of them were out of tune, and two of them were yarn, and one of them was wired to an electric fence. He's a handful is what I'm saying. And the tune I was going to have to play wasn't anything simple like Mary Had a Little Lamb. I looked at him. I swallowed. I considered. I chewed my lip a bit more. I couldn't just have my grandma dig up the box. There were like 30 trees in the corner of that park. I couldn't ask my grandma to go digging holes under 30 trees in August. I had no way of describing which one it was to her. I'd have to be back there looking around to have any chance of even finding it myself. Plus, it was my box, my memories. Shouldn't I be the one to save it? So. I absolutely 100% needed to get to Washington State. Rodeo absolutely 100% would refuse to take me. It was a puzzler. And then it hit me. Rodeo absolutely 100% would not take me on purpose. I just had to get him to take me to Washington State without him knowing he was doing it. My pulse bumped up a notch. Now that, that I might be able to do. I ran through the options in my head, pictured the map, dredged up some memories, went back through the files in my brain, and then I smiled, small and quick. Yep, coyote, I murmured to myself, that just might work. I put on my most casual of faces and ambled over to Rodeo. He popped the last bit of banana in his mouth and flashed a mushy yellow grin at me. You ready to go, pretty bird? Whenever, I shrugged, cool as anything. I stretched, looked up at the Florida sun, rubbed my stomach. I'm hungry. Yep, about that time. What sounds good? I looked at the ground, then up at the clouds, my lips pursed in a perfect portrayal of thoughtful consideration. Then I snapped my fingers. I got it. I know exactly what I want. Lay it on me. I squinted at him, screwed up my mouth, and nodded. Yep, I'm sure of it. Only one thing I want. Rodeo's eyes darted to the side, then back to me. Okay, and it is a pork chop sandwich. Rodeo blinked at me. Then he peered at the parking lot world around us. I don't know, little pigeon. I don't think any place around here will have no rodeo. I don't just mean I want a pork chop sandwich. I mean I want the pork chop sandwich. You mean... That's right, old man. I want the pork chop sandwich from Pork Chop John Sandwich Shop in Butte, Montana. A lot of people don't know it, but a pork chop sandwich is one of the world's perfect foods. And a lot of people also don't know it, but the world's best pork chop sandwiches are in Butte, Montana. And even more folks don't know it, but the best place in Butte, Montana to get a pork chop sandwich is a little place called Pork Chop John Sandwich Shop. I knew it, though, and so did Rodeo. I looked him right in his eyes. I just had myself a dead dream. Now, if any normal folks had heard me say those words, they might have been concerned. But Rodeo, he wasn't normal folks. When I told him I'd had a dead dream, he grinned at me, wide and bright. Dead dreams were a thing for us. It was an acronym. When one of us, and let's be honest, it was usually Rodeo, got a strong, undeniable hankering for something and it just couldn't wait, we called it a D-E-A-D -E dream. A uh, drop everything and drive dream. Didn't matter where we were, didn't matter what we wanted or how far away it was. 
Rodeo loved them. He'd had a de dead dream once for a fish taco from a specific taco truck he loved in San Diego. We were in North Dakota at the time. Didn't matter. There were some songs sung and a lot of coffee drunk and a ton of miles covered, and three days later, old Rodeo was noshing that taco and rolling his eyes with pleasure. Was the taco worth the drive, I'd ask him. And he'd wipe some taco juice off his chin and said through a mouthful, It ain't about the taco being worth the drive, Woodchuck. The question is, was the drive worth the taco? I had no idea what he meant, but that's Rodeo for you. So when I told him in that Florida parking lot that I had a dead dream for a pork chop sandwich in Montana, Rodeo was too excited to notice it was a bald-faced lie. You calling it? He said, jumping to his feet. For reals? Cross my heart, I said. And he held up his hand for a high five, and I gave him a good hard one, and he threw back his head and yee-hawed, and then said, well, heck, let's hit the road then, sugar bun, and spun on his heels and climbed up into Jaeger. I stood there for a beat or two. The fake smile I'd plastered on my face went stale and rotted away. I'd gotten us started. If I could get us to Montana, that was most of the way to where I really needed to get. As long as Rodeo never got a whiff of my real dream, I could get us most of the way there. But if he ever did figure it out, he was going to hit the brakes fast and forever. I took a breath, blew it out, flexed my fingers. You got this, coyote, I whispered, piece of cake. But it wasn't, and I knew it. Even as I put that smile back on and climbed up into the rumbling bus, I had to get myself and a bus and my dad all the way across the country in less than four days, and I had to do it without my dad noticing.